Hi, and welcome to Vlogs of History. I'm your host, Darius Gazin, and this week we're taking a look at the French Revolution. This is going to be a two-part series, the first one covering the French Revolution and the second part covering the Napoleonic era. Be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to be notified when part two comes out, which will be next Monday. The French Revolution was probably one of the most significant events that happened in modern France. Not only were there a lot of angry people who wanted a change, but they also managed to get rid of the monarchy. I mean, they kicked out the king from France. So let's start with the beginning. In the 18th century, France was lagging behind a bit. They were still under the feudalistic system. Now feudalism was a system where you had lords and peasants. The lords owned the land and the peasants would work on the land and pay a portion of what they make to the lord who would then offer them military protection. This sounds like a good system but it actually wasn't that fair and it was a little bit outdated. It was a system you would find mainly in the 9th century all the way up to the 1400s and the French Revolution was in 1789 and they still had feudalism which means that it was time for a change, it was time to bring modernism back to France. Add on to that a poor taxation system that basically rendered France almost on the brink of bankruptcy while you had people that were angry who wanted a change and thus a revolution. The current king at the time, King Louis XVI, originally did not want anything to change. He was good where he was at. But the truth of the matter was that France was being poor and they had no money. They needed desperately something to change. So in response to that, he called on the Estates General Assembly. Now the Estates General consisted of three estates, each representing a portion of the population where they would meet, discuss issues and vote on actions to take. There were though some problems with this. The problems were that each estate essentially had one vote as a unit. So the first estate got one vote, the second estate got another vote, and the third estate got another vote. The problem was that they wanted to change the taxation system and tax the nobility and the clergy. Two of the three estates were the nobility and the clergy, which meant that they would vote against taxation of the nobility and clergy and thus not get anything done. The second problem was that the third estate, which represented the peasants, well, the peasants accounted for 98% of the total population in France and so it was unfair that they would get the same votes as the other two estates. Realizing how unfair it was, the third estate actually separated and went on and created their own estate called the National Assembly. He then invited the other two estates to join them. And this was all without the king's approval. They assembled in a tennis court in Versailles and actually took an oath to not disband until a new constitution had been written up for France. Louis XVI of course did not like this. Initially seeming to yield to the idea when he legalized the National Assembly, he actually went and surrounded them with military and disbanded their leader. In response to this, the people of Paris were furious and they stormed the Bastille while they thought the ammunitions were being held. The assembly managed to actually draft a constitution called the Declaration of the Rights and Man and of the Citizen, which proposed a proper judicial system and independence for the French people. Shortly after, Louis XVI tried to flee France. The nearby countries of Austria and Prussia were all afraid that the revolution that was going going on in France would maybe spark something in their own countries. Louis XVI saw that they had common goals and so he tried to flee and join up with them and start a counter-revolution. His escape attempt ultimately failed and he was captured while still being in France. This of course enraged the people even more and really pushed the idea that they should not have a king anymore because even their king tries to flee their own country. Within the National Assembly there was a split. Those who wanted to keep the monarchy but have its power limited by the constitution and those who just straight up wanted the monarchy out of the picture completely. After the king's failed escape attempt, France declared war on Austria and Prussia, a war that they were initially struggling to fight. With France losing control of its territories because of the war, those within the National Assembly who wanted the monarchy completed out of the picture took power and made the National Convention. With this National Convention, they managed to successfully abolish the monarchy and they even executed King Louis XVI on grounds of treason. A big part of why he was executed was the fact that he tried to flee and start up a counter-revolution. For a while, it seemed that things were looking better for France, although that was a little short-lived. The leader of the National Convention Convention became increasingly paranoid about the influences of counter-revolutionaries. Because of that, he began putting massive amounts of people on the guillotine. Now, the guillotine was an execution machine that would kill you by essentially decapitating your head. It is estimated that around 15,000 people were actually sent to the guillotine. After all, the French army was eventually able to fend off the foreign attackers and actually make progress in every single direction. The progress was due to a new and young general leading armies successfully to victory in battle. Can you guess who he was? It was none other than Napoleon Bonaparte. All right, that was it for part one of this two-part series. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, share it to a friend, and subscribe to be notified when part two comes out. If you're new to the show, click that subscribe button and make sure to check out the previous episodes. We've covered some very interesting topics right here. Remember, these episodes come out every Monday, so be sure to stay tuned. As always, I'm your host, Darius Cos, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I will see you all next week.